Hello everybody, Aylin Hart here. So today we are continuing on my interview with series and we are doing interview with an audiobook narrator producer. Now, if you are friends with me on any form of social media, you, you know that I'm a huge lover of audiobooks. Now, I will make a huge confession. Before I got my books into audio, I had no idea what audiobooks were really all about. I pretty much thought that it was people with great voices just literally reading a book. I had no idea that there was voice acting involved. I had no, I just, I had no idea about the process. But when I sat down at the beginning of 2018, and I made my goals and aspirations list for myself as an author and publisher, one of my really big goals was to get my books into audio. I'm in a lot of author groups and reader groups, and so I was seeing all over the place that audiobooks are really just exploding. And I think it's because we live in such a busy world that we can't always sit down and find the time to actually read a book, myself included. I find it really hard sometimes to find the time to read a book. And there are people who really don't like to read, but they like listening to the stories. And so it's kind of the best of both worlds, if you think about it. Now, again, before I uploaded any books to ACX, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I knew that I am still a small time author. Not a lot of people know who I am. And I was really nervous that nobody would want to narrate or produce my book. And the first book that I put up was Rocking Autumn. I was terrified. You know, there's a little section where you kind of have to sell yourself and not just your book. And then I uploaded the script that I wanted read. And I walked away from it thinking, okay, well, at least I tried. And, you know, then I can say I tried my best and I can check that off my goal list as a, oh, okay, that didn't work kind of thing. I was really excited when 24 hours later, I had a whole bunch of auditions to go through. And then I figured out what the big deal about audiobooks was. So as an author, a lot of times, you know, when we're writing, we hear the tones, we hear the emotions, we, we hear the scenes in our head, and we just have to hope that our readers pick up on it and pick up on, you know, the tone that we're trying to set there. And when you have a great audiobook narrator, they do that for you, and especially if in your if you're in communication constantly about certain scenes or about certain things or they ask you about certain things, um, you know that all of that really comes to life and it's really exciting to hear the things that you've read brought to life in the way that you've heard it in your head. It's it's honestly something I can't really describe. The next best thing would probably be seeing it in a movie, which, you know, fingers crossed, maybe I'll put that on my aspiration list in like five years. So after working with Stephen Barrett on Rocking Autumn, I was hooked on audiobooks and having my books put into audio. And so then I worked with Logan McAllister on The Space Between Us. And again, just like working with Stephen, the experience was incredible. Logan was amazing to work with, just like Stephen was. And he brought his own tone and his own style and his own pace to that book. And again, I could not have been more pleased with the product that we put out there into the world. I was over the moon when Alan Taylor sent me his audition for How We Fall. Now, when I put up my book for narration, I don't pick the person who reads in the voice that I'm hearing in my head. I pick the person who reads in the tone that I'm hearing in my head and the pace at which I want things read and the emotion with which I want things read. Alan Taylor's voice is incredible. His tone is incredible. His pacing is incredible. And the way that he reads characters is once again, incredible. He was amazing to work with through the whole process. He was really fast. He was really communicative. Um, not only did we email a lot, but we added each other on Facebook and Twitter and through the process got to know each other a little bit better, which again was a really awesome thing for me. Now, if you don't know who Alan Taylor is, you're about to find out. Alan Taylor is the narrator of more than 95 audiobooks, and some of which are USA Today and New York Times bestsellers. He has narrated so many genres from science fiction all the way up to erotica. So guaranteed if you there's a genre you like, there's a book that he's read. Alan Taylor saw that I wanted to talk to people in the industry and pick their brains a little bit. He was the first person in my inbox saying, I would love to do an interview with you. Let's do interview with an audiobook narrator producer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk to Alan.
So hello everybody, we are back with Alan Taylor. Um, I already gave him a little bit of an introduction, but I really would like him to introduce himself. I think he's had a really interesting background in radio and all kinds of things. So Alan, could you kind of give me a run through of a lot of the things that you've done? Sure, I'd be glad to. And uh, thanks for having me here. Yeah, I'm so uh, excited. Um, yeah, you know, I tell people I've been behind a microphone since I was in high school. Right. <laughs> we, we won't talk about how long ago that was. Um, but uh, early on, uh, when I was in middle school, I was at a, a shopping center and watched some guys from a radio station do a live remote. Oh. And I was just enchanted with that. And I said, that's what I want to do. Okay. Uh, so uh, I got into radio when I was in high school and then later in college and then later full time. I was an all night disc jockey for a while, midnight to 6 a.m. Uh, I, I can hear that. You have that DJ voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which was fantastic. Um, there are some great people who work all night long yeah. doctors, nurses, truck drivers, you name it. And uh, they need entertainment. So uh, I really enjoy being a, an all-night disc jockey. I later went into news, and I was a news anchor in uh, Augusta, Georgia, Columbia, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Wow. Um, so I was a reporter and a news anchor for a while. Um, and then, like a lot of people in the news business, I left the news business to do corporate public relations. Okay. Um, did that for a major healthcare system in Charlotte for a long time. Uh, and eventually decided to go out on my own in public relations. And um, the problem with public relations agencies and, and advertising agencies is if they'll land a client and they'll hire people, they'll lose a client, they'll panic and they'll lay people off. So I got laid off from a couple of agencies. And a friend of mine who, it turns out, we had worked in the Charlotte television market, but not at the same time. Mm hmm uh, but we knew some of the same people as a result of that. And uh, he said to me one day, you ought to narrate audio books. And I was like, I wouldn't even know how to get started. <laughs> so he, he sort of showed me how to get started. And I started doing audio books part-time right. while, while I was still working. And uh, the part-time income kept growing as I kept doing more and more books to where um, the audio book income part-time equaled what I was making full-time. No way. So I decided, well, in that case, I'm going to jump to full-time. So <laughs> I, I, I jumped to full-time audio books uh, probably almost two years ago. And wow. I do it, I do it full-time. I live in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Right. Uh, so I narrate audio books full-time and uh, I absolutely love it. I've done uh, I've done 105 books now. Okay, I was going to ask because your website says 95, but I need yeah, to it needs to be updated. Right yeah, <laughs> I'm really I'm really bad about updating my uh, my uh, well, website. You're preaching to the choir. I <laughs> say. So, do you but, remember um, the first book you ever narrated? Yeah, uh, it, it was called. <laughs> um, what was it? The the love. It was the love something another, and it was actually. Um, a, a 1950s or early 60s era dime store novel kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, I have, I love those. Like a, like a Pulp Fiction kind of? Yes, or, yes, okay. it, yes. It was definitely one of those Pulp Fiction books. I love those. And, and uh, uh, I did that one, and I've gone back and listened to samples of it, and I'm like, oh, I would love <laughs> to do it again. Um, right? Because yeah. I, I, think, I think I have improved my craft a little bit. I, and, you know, I think with anything you do, the more you do it, the better you get at it. So Yeah, like your first book versus what you write now? I uh, mean, I pulled my first book off the market because, <laughs> no, this is a true story. I went to my first book signing event, and I think when you and I first started working together, I was going mm -hmm. there. Okay. Yes. Yes. And I realized when I was trying to unsell that book, that was a problem. <laughs> and I, I still love the story. I love everything about it. But just, I mean, I wrote it eight years ago and then I published sure. it a year ago. Sure. So yeah. Anyway, so I get that. So what do you, what do you love most about narrating books? Well, first off, even when I was a news reporter, and a lot of people say, oh, people who were in the news business don't make good narrators. Or, and I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. um, because even when you're a news reporter, 
you're telling a story. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy telling stories. Okay. Um, but what I love about audiobooks versus that news business is I get to act a little. And yeah. I guess there's a little bit of a ham in me, a little bit of an actor in me. <laughs> It's been bubbling under the surface all these years. Okay. So I get to act a little bit. Um, uh, I, I got to act a little bit in the, in the book I did for you. Yeah. Um, and I, right now, for example, I'm uh, narrating a Civil War novel. Okay. And there, there's a lot of acting in that. Oh, um, I can imagine. From being a Union soldier to being a plantation owner to being a slave, you know, uh, there's lots of voices in this thing. Mm -hmm. So I get, to, I get to work on some different accents and, and get to act. And I really enjoy that aspect of it. That's awesome. So that being said, what is the hardest part, do you think, about narrating a book for you? Um, sometimes it's the accents. Uh, mm -hmm. If I get asked to do an accent that I have to research, that can be difficult. I, I think I asked you to do a few. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. Um, uh, uh, the, the other thing is um, uh, nonfiction books can be difficult. I can imagine that, yeah. And the reason, well, the main reason why, and a lot of people say this, a lot of other, my fellow narrators say this, is with a nonfiction book, it's difficult to maintain that energy that you uh -huh. get by doing uh, a fiction, uh, a right. novel. Okay. So what do you think, if, if there was someone watching right now who wanted to become a narrator, what do you think makes a good one? Um, I think it's basically the ability to tell a story and hold the listener's interest. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to have a, what they call a great voice. Um, so it helps. And I think it, it, <laughs> go ahead. It, it, it helps. It, well, it helps, but I mean, there are some great narrators who have really unique voices that aren't your typical, you know, male, you know, anchorman <laughs> voice. Or whatever. Um, but I think, uh, I think it's the ability to tell a story and hold an interest. Um, and, and I think it's the ability to put your butt in the seat and do the job. Um, yeah. It's work. Uh, and, you know, I work at it eight hours a day. Uh, it's a lot of work. And, and there's, a, there's a famous uh, narrator and narrator coach who did a video for people who think they want to get into this. Mm -hmm. And what he suggests they do is get a book, find a quiet place in their home and sit down and start reading aloud. And if they make a mistake, back up a sentence or two, keep going and keep doing that over and over. Do that for about four hours a day for a month. <laughs> and then he said, at the end of the month, if you still think you want to do it, come see me. And um, I think that's, everybody thinks they could do this, but it's really a lot of hard work. I do a video and my voice is hurting. So I wonder like how you do that for eight hours a day and you, do you do it from your home? I do. I have a, a I'm, in fact, I'm in my studio now. Now, okay. the, I don't know if you can see this mic in the shot. This is I not can. the mic, but this is not the mic I use. There's actually, let me see if I can move my camera here. Yeah, I want to see. There's actually a big booth here. It's kind of tall. You can't see it. Uh, it's called a whisper room, and um, I don't have enough. I don't have enough cable to get a shot of the inside. But basically, it is a a, a sound resistant room, okay. um, and so I can go in there and uh, cables lead out to this computer. But I can go in there and narrate and not hear the landscapers with their lawn blo leaf blowers next door, that sort of thing. So um, uh, I do it here at home. Uh, my typical day is I get up in the morning, obviously, and watch a little news and, and drink coffee. And, and usually by about 8.30, I'm in here checking emails and seeing if there's any projects I want to audition for. Uh, by 9 o'clock, I'm usually in the booth. Um, yeah. But before that, I have been, after the initial coffee, I drink a lot of water and a lot of hot tea. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I try to hydrate my voice. I drink about two liters of water a day. Um, and then, uh, there's some, uh, teas that help your throat, that sort of thing. And I heard uh, chapstick helps. Is that yes, true? yes, yes. In fact, uh, you know, a lot of people do, uh, books through ACX and, uh, ACX at a conference was actually giving out lip, lip balm with their logo. <laughs> um, yeah, it does. And, um, so, you know, do that. And, and I, I record a chapter at a time. Okay. Uh, I re I'll record a chapter of a book. I'll go back, I'll edit out any problems, I'll do some 
equalization and some technical things to it and master it and then upload it and then I'll do another chapter. Um, on a good day, if I really work hard at it, I can do about no more than two finished hours a day of a book. Oh, wow. General, generally, I'm hitting around one to one and a half, mm -hmm. but that's because I'm doing some marketing and some other things on the side too. But right. if I just focus on narrating, I can do two hours a day. I was really impressed with how fast you got your chapters to me. I was like, holy cow, this guy's on fire. I could not <laughs> keep up with you. Uh, yeah. So I, well, I, I think part of that's because I do it full time. I mean, there are a lot of part-time narrators, and I was a part-time narrator, and I fully get that. Yeah. But now that I'm able to do it full-time, I can, I, I do the work. And I imagine you treat it like a job. You say you're up at a certain time, you have a schedule you stick with, and I think that's also probably really important, like me with my writing. If I don't stick to a schedule, it's really easy to get sucked into Facebook or watching movies or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Facebook and YouTube are my downfall. <laughs> and, and I love them both, <laughs> but, but I need to stay off of them. Oh my um, gosh. And, and so, yeah, I actually, you know, I, I plan out my day. I have a calendar and I have a to-do list every day. And, uh, at the, uh, at the end of the day, I love having those things marked off that to-do list. Okay. Um, and, and like, I don't break for lunch until around noon, Perfect. you know, and I, and I'll, I'll take maybe 30, 45 minutes for lunch and then I'm right back at it. Right back at and, it. um, I usually work until about four or five in the, in the afternoon, depending on how my voice is holding up. Mm -hmm. um, I am sort of getting to the point now, though, where as, because this is such a solitary job, mm -hmm. you know, I don't get to see other people. Um, I'm getting to the point now where I'm trying to schedule it where I don't work Fridays. Okay. Or, or I take an occasional Friday off. Mm -hmm. So I have a long weekend. Right. And I don't work on weekends unless I'm up against a deadline. Now, for example, I'm up against a deadline uh, on the Civil War book, the end of this month, which is coming up Friday. Well, I'm leaving Thursday for a vacation, so I've got to finish the book. Yeah, you so, do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I will. I've, I've, only got a, <laughs> I've only got another hour of it to do. So I, okay. I mean, yeah, so. Well, I only have a few more questions. So sure. I am curious, because um, I know a lot of my author friends have not done audio before, and so I, I'm really curious, what you're looking for when you're going in and looking for a new project, what makes you say that is one I would like to do? Like, how do you, how do you decide what you want to read? Well, you know, I, I think first off the synopsis of the book that, that we're given uh, helps a lot. If it okay. just looks like an intriguing story, uh, then I'm all in, you know, I okay. want to do it. Um, if it, uh, if the, author can give reasonable background of the characters. Mm -hmm. So I have a real feel for who the characters are. And one of the, the great things that you did for me was you gave me that separate sheet telling me a little bit about each one of these characters. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, of course, if it's of uh, reasonable deadlines, that sort of thing. But usually those are negotiable. Um, but that's about it. It just has to be a story that, that I would want to read. Okay. Uh, that I would want to read in printed form. And so do, do you go in lurking? I see, and I don't know what your end of ACX looks like, but do you yeah. look for certain genres? Is everything just kind of out there? What does that look like for you? I've done just about every genre. Yeah. Um, uh, but I really enjoy romance. Uh, really? I'm a, I'll, I'll be honest about it. I, I you know, um, it may sound weird for a guy to say, no, but I really fun. enjoy romance novels. Uh, I think maybe it's because deep down inside I'm a romantic at heart. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's either fun stories to tell. Um, hopefully, romance is part of everyone's life. Yeah. And those are very important stories. And romance readers and listeners take them very seriously. And they are voracious. <laughs> yes. And so there's plenty of work out there. I've been blessed to do a lot of them. Yeah. Um, uh, so I enjoy those. Uh, I, I enjoy those a lot. And I tend to to get a lot of that type of work. So mm -hmm. I tend to look for those projects. Okay. Interesting. So I'm also curious kind of what your process looks like. Do you just jump in? Do you read the book first? What is, what does that look like for you? Great question. Um, when I get the manuscript, I speed read it. I okay. go through and just, I just, I just have it on my, my tablet and I just speed read the thing looking for, 
uh, the arc of the story. Okay. Looking for any surprises in the story. Um, looking for any words I don't know how to pronounce that I'm, or any accents that I'm going to have to research. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, before I record a chapter, I carefully read that chapter. I've already sped read the whole story. I know, I, I know where the book's going. Then I'll sit down and I'll carefully read that chapter before I go in to record it. Okay, interesting. Um, and, um, you know, and then we proof it and send it on its merry little way. Okay, very cool. So I'm curious if there's any scenes that you have that, let's see, how do I word this? I wonder if there's any scenes that you really look forward to reading and or really don't look forward to reading. Like, is there something that when you read it, you're like, oh gosh, how am I going to do this? Or yes, I get to do this today. Uh, I, I do like drama. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like when there's conflict yeah. in, in the story. Um, uh, and I also like when uh, in the romance stories when there's been this build up to the to the scene, yes. uh, and uh, and that scene finally happens. Um, one of the things that I actually learned uh, at a voiceover conference from uh, uh, a pretty well known uh, audiobook narrator who does a lot of uh, romance is she said, "Slow down during the sex scenes." Mm -hmm. And I thought that was pretty interesting um, th that the narrator actually needs to, to slow down during those parts. I think a lot of narrators want to rush through them. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I like drama. I like, I like that conflict in the story. Um, in, I did a book where a woman was in an abusive relationship. Oh, gosh. And some of those scenes were difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, for me to, to narrate simply because I, I got emotionally attached to the character, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and in the civil rights book that I'm doing, uh, there's a couple of scenes where a slave is beaten. And those are very difficult to read, uh, yeah. very difficult to work through. But it's a job. I look at myself as an actor. Uh, you know, I tell people all the time, if I was an actor on film and I did these things, you wouldn't think twice about it. So it's, it's the same thing with uh, doing it in audio form. Mm hmm so what would you say to any authors who have yet to jump into audio? What would you say to them? What kind of advice would you give them? Well, first of all, I'd encourage them to do it simply because um, the audio books are the fastest growing part of the publishing business. Yes. Uh, as, as you probably know, hardback sales are down, soft cover sales are down, but audio books are booming. So if you're not in the audio book game, you're, the train is leaving you behind. You need yeah. to be in. Um, Make sure your book is ready to be read in audio. Uh, we have a lot of new authors coming into it, and they don't realize what it's going to sound like. Mm -hmm. So make sure your book has been professionally edited, professionally proofed, uh, and, and I want that manuscript to be ready to be read. Um, I narrated a book for a guy one time, and it was like, let's go, he said. I'm not ready, she said. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we need to leave now, he said. You know, and I got back to him and I said, this book's not ready. Yeah. You know, it's simply not ready. Um, uh, so the book needs to be professionally edited. Um, okay. And we need a finished manuscript. Uh, the other thing, and this is a small thing, but uh, send, it, send it if you can in a, in a doc uh, document instead of a PDF so we can change the font. <laughs> we can change oh. the font size. Um, I read off a tablet and um, I was wondering how you did that. Yeah. Yeah. You re I read off a tablet. And so uh, I want that font size to be a, a, a good size. You, uh, you actually make fewer reading errors if it's large. Okay. Uh, and read off a tablet so you don't get the sound of pages turning if you had an actual book or printed pages. So that's why I do that. Okay, interesting. I will do that from now on. <laughs> well, it was such a pleasure working with you. Honestly, you were so professional and fast, and I loved every time you did a scene with Georgia. I just, I did. It, I was so tickled. I think in every book, I always have someone who I think is the secret star who is not the star of the book, and. Yeah. So in my previous book, it was Mama Rose. Um, and in this one, it was Georgia. And so I was so excited every time you did a scene with her. I just died laughing. It was so perfect. It was so much fun. 
So I want to thank you for an incredible experience. Well, thank you. And, and yeah. it's funny because uh, uh, Georgia, uh, for, for your folks who haven't read or listened to the book yet, uh, <laughs> uh, Georgia is Southern and I am live in the South. I'm originally from South Carolina. So turning back on that Southern accent was, <laughs> was no problem at, at all. I loved your book. It's a great story. Okay. Uh, uh, I think you're a fantastic writer and I thank really you. thank you for the opportunity to do it. All right. Well, uh, I look forward to having a long friendship with you and best of luck. And I'm going to go ahead and link everything about you down below so people can get a hold of you. And hopefully we will just be hearing like another 200 books in a year or so. So Absolutely. And, and best of luck to you as well. Thank I hope we you. get to meet in person sometime soon. Absolutely. Heck yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I know I really enjoyed talking to Alan today and I hope that it demystified some of the process to you and maybe humanized narrators for you a little bit. And if you haven't gotten into audio yet, it's really not scary. Um, there are amazing producers out there and there are amazing producers out there who are willing to do royalty share with you if that's something that is holding you back. Would I love to be able to pay two to $3,000 and pay narrators to do a dual narration and have a female read the female parts and a male read the male parts? Absolutely. But the reality is, is that I can't, but I'm not letting that hold me back from something I really want to do. And I would say 90 to 95% of my reviews have all been positive on the way it was read. And even the ones who brought it up that, you know, oh, they maybe would have liked to have heard a female reading the female parts. It didn't detract from the story from them and it didn't detract from their enjoyment of the story. So again, if that's something that's holding you back, don't let it. If you are being held back because you think that you aren't good enough or nobody knows who you are, Again, it's all about selling yourself and selling your book. And I say go for it because you never know what's going to happen with a lot of hard work and tenacity and putting your mind to something. I truly believe that you can make anything happen. So please give today's video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. And then also hit that little notification bell up top so you know every time I'm posting a new video, I will be back next week with a new series called The Work in Progress Diaries. Now, I haven't done this yet because there's a certain point that I hit in books where I know it's go time and I know that this story is going to work for me. And that's usually anywhere between 15,000 and 20,000 words or 15 to 20% of my goal word count for a novel. I am excited to say that I have hit that goal in both Rocking Forever and in something like this because as I've said before, I'm currently writing two books, which is kind of insane. But um, if you know me, then you know that I'm kind of insane. So I'm writing two books. I've hit that point in my books where I'm full stride and it is just, the story is flying out of me. So I want to once a month do a vlog style video where you're following me through the writing, proofreading, editing process until I get those babies out into the world. My goal, and I'm gonna go ahead and put that out there right now for something like this is to have it published by late November to early December skipping that um, period of time in December where you really shouldn't put your books out there because nobody's going to buy them. And then I'm hoping to have Rocking Forever out by January at the latest. So um, hopefully I can meet those goals and I'm going to write them down just like all of my other goals so that it's right in front of me and I'm hitting that. So until next time, I will see you guys next week.